I don't know what to say. <laughs> Try to have a poetry reading and they fucking start a drama war, I guess. Since I'm at a university, ah, these lights are bright. Since I'm at a university, I'd like to read something that has to do with education. Uh, this is called Academic Institutional Life Experience. On the downside, sunlight is terror at 7 a.m. and love is there only to mask the insanity and cover the stains of spilled drinks and overturned ashtrays like used furniture or a thrift store thread, thread, threadbare rug. In the university, they teach bloodletting 101 to start you out with a better vocabulary and a sharper image, as long as you don't go near any hard surfaces that could make it all seem dull. Prerequisites are acting like an anachronism of liberal failure and a lunchbox big enough to carry your long dead friends and other casualties of your impending ignorance. from the first chapbook that was put out on DVPL called Spare Blade. This is called Beauty. She sleeps in the tall grass as the coolness of the misty rain settles on her naked body. Her heart is swollen with love, a swelling that increases the pain in her mind. Her beauty far surpasses anything of flesh known to you. She can melt emotions with a mere glance, yet wicked beings will prey upon her physical gift. She seems to maintain a certain inner peace without ever exposing the quality of her feelings or divulging a threshold to her emotions. She can observe the world and cry when it seems unfair, but then, in a vulnerable moment, she takes another victim. This is, um, this is called In a Porno. I know Amber, got her number at a party in the valley. She's a nice girl. It makes me smile just to think of her. In my dreams, we made love. In her car, we had sex. What's the difference? None, I guess. Just like in her movie, it's not the location, it's the action. And the best continuity techniques come from porno flicks, the granddads of music video. In the billion, in the billion dollar industry, where if Tony Basil made one, they would call it art. And it makes me wonder, how do you know if you're really in love, or just in another porno. It's called Wannabe Biker. Leather jackets are on sale on a neon street in a neon town. Purchase the look that would make Marlon Brando proud. Look in the mirror and rock and roll dreams take shape before your eyes. Harley Davidson wishes are granted by the bondage fairy as the devil laughs at another satisfied customer and the black kids beat you up and take it away. And you say, this never happened in the movie. <laughs> This is called Shot in the Dark. We were just walking to the liquor store. Violence was the last thing on our minds that night. Shots rang out from behind. We both hit the ground, and I laid there forever until you called my name. Your blood covered everything, 
the sidewalk, the wall, my clothes. You told me something before you died. I've tried, but I can never remember exactly what you said. All I can recall clearly is the amount of force the officer used to remove my shirt from your grip. I would have given it to you if only you would have opened your eyes. Simmering noodles, dreams of wheat-covered plains, a meal in itself. Intelligentalia, 
of the super new, super size, super duper stormtrooper, super America. Super amped out on the southern continental caffeine bean America. Super flag waving patriot jism always needs a bigger prison. Super fucking America. You know, I don't usually wear a jacket. Why? <laughs> because it's just one more thing for the cops to search, you know? <laughs> They're getting paid by the hour, so... <laughs> I do my part. <laughs> this is called Circle Jerk. The war is raging. We are bombing constantly. They fire missiles irregularly. We have an air supremacy, yet it is still a viable war as it causes death. Even though from television pictures, a simpleton might conclude that we are fighting a madman with a mustache and an army of concrete buildings. These concrete buildings can't seem to un outrun our modern jets. But I did see a picture of a building trying to shoot back. And this bores me. So I start masturbating. And I feel better. In fact, I feel so good that I wonder why masturbation doesn't replace war altogether. I mean, all this effort into flying jets with joysticks and missiles and bombs that are supposed to be smart, but still look like dicks. <laughs> it just seems that it would take less effort to jack off than to go to war. Maybe that is the key. Maybe it takes great effort for current world leaders to masturbate in a satisfactory way. So great an effort that war just becomes the easy way out. I can look at the way they all appear as they parade by on the TV screen. So-called world leaders, presidents, generals, emirs, kings, and so forth. And I notice they all have this very tense look on their faces. As if they were caught mid-stroke by a news camera. No wonder they are so sensitive to media coverage. <laughs> it's the biggest circle jerk in the world being done by a bunch of guys who have great difficulty with masturbation. <laughs> and I just shake my head in utter disbelief and feel confident that I can lay back and masturbate myself contentedly in peace, knowing that when I am done, I won't have to explain things like dead mothers, dead children, oil spills mixed with blood, or poverty created by my need to be satisfied. All I will need is a little toilet paper. <laughs> So this is something I call ghosts of a selective service. They can declare war on burning sands and green forests. They have a camouflage for all environments, a good reason for all their actions. They kill time by beating drunks and druggies before they pass on to dust and ashes. They extend credit, issue identification cards, Collect what is due. Hold you down for your own good. They are the most exclusive and the most cruel. And you would all walk away in a second if they asked you to follow. 
And I would just turn out the lights and wait until you came back with your badges and your bayonets. This is called San Bernardino, and this is in that book. Their mouths gape open in awe and despair. The wind blows down their throats, drying up their souls from the inside out, making their voices rough and cynical, making their eyes tearless and glazed over. A valley of people with eyes like the rock lizards that run under their feet. A valley of people that dream of mountains that bury them alive for their sins. And they all turn away from holy little Bernard as he bears his cross to the top of the freeway interchange, his feet burning from the hot pavement, his head ble bleeding from the crown of citrus thorns, his side pierced by the yucca sphere. And sweet young Mary runs down Mount Vernon Avenue in high heels applying makeup as she goes. She watches in confusion while Bernard is crucified, inverted, to keep the smog in the air and the blood in the ground. The mountains lean back hard at the sight of this, away from the ritual noise, while the last arrowhead cannot quite point a direction for anybody to escape. Um, this is Schultz's Bar in Superior, Wisconsin. Bye. <laughs> That's what this is called. I am sitting here among pool tables and drunks, trying to glean the last knowledge from my last thoughts, trying to find the last fish in a vast body of water. Sunday is nothing when water is freezing. My thoughts are like steam escaping. My mind stretches like a thumbprint on her thigh. That woman behind the bar, she fills my beard and becomes an unwilling target for my affection and hormones. Silk dreams cool my burning eyes. How deep is the darkest pool of humanity? How sharp is the hardest edge of reality? This movement of thought seems necessary to life. Judgment is living death and microscopes and examinations. I see my tiny emotions, they are real. They are the edges that cut my soul. The sound of sticks, chalk, and balls set me free. The open loneliness and haze above the green felt pastures is my only salvation, like the foam of frozen waves on a great lake of desire. And this is just called War, kind of tentatively titled War. And it's kind of recent. I wrote it up in Frisco. It's my last one. Self and the. <clears throat> this is called War. And, um, Okay. The self indulgent <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm ignorant. Fuck. The self indulgent <laughs> It's a word I have a problem with. Indulgent? It's a word I have a problem with. The self indulgent cycle starts all over again. And my feet hurt from walking all day while the war went on around me. My war, their war, everybody's little separate war where we all lose something and maybe win some back, maybe win someone else's loss and never gain very much in the way of spoils. So I fight the pavement and finally win some dog shit on the bottom of my shoe that almost wins me when I slip and almost slide into the busy intersection. 
a busy intersection that has no value save the near misses and occasional hits that are a symbol of progress to all the smug, comfortable types that think they are really the ones who got something or someone on or by the balls. So I just nurture my inability to feel the pain that they feel to get that desired righteous effect that may help me become a street corner prophet yelling out obscene profundities and no one in particular like some major wing nut just loosed from an institutional hell. A hell whose only salvation is free coffee, soup kitchens, and spare change as the streets rise and fall on top of what was once hills and valleys with meadows that are now covered with steel, asphalt, concrete, and human parasites that have proven durable so far as they spread out into the final phase of their insignificant new world order that they expect to propel into the next millennia even though the cold is still so common and dog shit is all I ever win as I wage my war against the cracking, warm down sidewalk. Thank you. Yeah, yeah.